It is finally here. Let's crack this open. Ugh. Aperture Lightstorm 300. X. Now there was the Aperture 300D and that D stood for daylight. And then there's also the Aperture 120T. T stands for tungsten color temperature. This is the X. The X stands for uh, uh, extreme. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Inside of the bag, we have our Aperture 300X, two cables, a reflector, manual sticker, a remote, a screw for I have no clue, and a clamp for the ballast. I've been a fan of the Aperture Lightstorm lights forever. I mean, that's what I'm using as my key light right here. There's another one back here. They're powerful, but fairly compact for what it can do. And also they're very clean in the color spectrum. So when you light somebody, there's not not weird green tints, but the quality of these fixtures are what I would expect out of a professional product. Now, it isn't a cheap light. Let's just get that out of the way. This light here right now is $11.99. Some of you might be like, oh my God, that's crazy. 1200 bucks for a light. But at the same time, I've paid much more for that Mo Richardson right there. And even a uh, Westcott light, I've paid like close to two grand for. I mean, professional film gear, it's expensive, period. But what you can expect out of them is longevity. They're gonna be reliable. They're gonna perform the way you need them to. But anyways, I'm excited to strike this thing. Let's go plug it in. Now it's pretty common to think that you need video lights when it's dark, which is obviously true, but it's also very useful for when you're trying to control lighting when it's bright out, then that's when you really need a powerful light. Now it's a super hot day today. The sun is almost directly above us, not ideal. First thing we're gonna do, cut out some of that harsh lighting using a diffuser. That's a Westcott Scrim Gem. It's a four by four with I think a one stop diff. So already that makes a huge difference right there, but now he's a little bit underexposed because we are cutting out about a stop of light. So let's add that back in with a light. So we added some light from the same direction the sun was originally coming in at, except for instead of coming in from above, now it's coming in from the front, but it is still too harsh. And we're gonna go ahead, swap out this reflector for a dome light, should give us a nice softer light. I have the 300X on max output. So now if we look at the before and after, so much more pleasing, no more super extreme harsh shots coming in from above, but still a nice gentle glow from the front that looks natural, but still looks nice and clean. Another thing to keep in mind is that we know of daylight as what, 5,600 degrees Kelvin, somewhere in that range, but that's just average. In reality, it changes and fluctuates a lot throughout the day. I mean, golden an hour it's pretty obvious it's very very warm so when you're locked into a certain color temperature and you want to make a subtle change it becomes a lot more difficult you need all these different increments in CTOs or CTBs and it also takes a lot more time to sort through those filters but here it's just ooh, perfect you dial it in so quick this is beautiful so in this case I think I'm gonna go warm and also a little bit less on the intensity that's a little too warm I'm gonna bring it back out a little bit love how you could just make these slight adjustments so easily if you were to softbox this it'll look a little more natural or you could just you know really dial it down so you barely even notice it but just having a little bit of pop of detail boom just having a little bit can make a big difference. And just like before, it's a little bit intense with this reflector, so I'm gonna slap the softbox on here. I find that usually the softer the light is, the more you can punch it without it looking too artificial. Look at that. If this light was 6,000 degrees Kelvin, it'll look like this. Eh, no thanks. It just looks very weird with this nice orange background. And of course, if it was a tungsten light, it would be down here around 3,200. It actually looks a little bit too orange now. So I kind of like being right there, probably around 4,000. I love being able to make those subtle changes opposed to having to do these big jumps. So bicolor lights, Awesome. Oh yeah, look at that. With no lights, we have no detail at all. I also love that a light with this much kick can be powered off little V-mount batteries. If I put on the secondary V-mount, I should be able to push it a little bit more. So let me go ahead and do that. Making this a really powerful light for something that's portable. So love that. Oh man, with two batteries, look how much kick I can get out of this thing. But how awesome is this flexibility, huh? Battery powered light that's nice and soft, portable, 
and has color temperature control. I'm loving this. Oh man, look at that. I mean, when you have a light that's flexible and easy to use, and battery powered like this, it makes it a lot more fun to experiment, try different things. You really end up getting a lot more interesting stuff because you're not as afraid to experiment. Of course, now that the sun has set, all the light goes from being really warm to very cool. So we're gonna go in the complete opposite direction. Now nice and blue, we're all the way up at 6,500 degrees Kelvin. We also have a lot less light coming in from the sky, so we don't have to counter it as much. So we could also dial down the intensity way low. Oh man, all right, we're getting bit up by mosquitoes. Let's get the heck out of here. That's one thing I dislike about this aperture light. It attracts a lot of mosquitoes. It should come with built-in insect repellent. Oh, all right, let's get out of here. Quick, run! When you're picking out a light, most important thing to know, is it bright enough? And you can measure that with lux or lumens or candela per square foot, all these metrics. I just wanna know, is it bright enough? I'm gonna compare it to a couple of lights that are pretty common, like this might be one of the most popular lights out there, the Airy. 650, it's a tungsten light. Now these are great lights, but they are very inefficient. It has some of the cleanest colors you can get out of a light, but at the same time, it does draw a lot of power. and also does produce quite a bit of heat, but when it comes to output, let's compare the two. So we're setting the two light fixtures exactly five feet away from my face. Definitely gonna need some sunglasses for this. This is the Airy Fresnel, it's a 650 watt. Here are the camera settings right now. Like I'm decently exposed on this one, but I'm way overexposed once we switch to the 300. Yeah, that's way brighter. All right. Now the airy light is a tungsten light, which is clean, but very inefficient. So we're getting a measurement of about 609 watts of power out of the airy light. And on the aperture light at full power, we're drawing about 232 watts. So we're using a fraction of the power, but getting more output. Now, remember how I said I liked how small this 300X was? I mean, that's comparing to lights like this. This is the only other bicolor Fresnel that I have. And look at the size difference of these two. And here's the Draycast, both of them at max output at 3200 degrees Kelvin. Now here we have the Westcott Flexlight two by one, and it is a bit more expensive than the Aperture, but also it does have full RGB. So it actually does have the advantage of being able to cover all the colors opposed to just warm and cool. But that's also passed through this one by two softbox. So to do something comparable with the aperture, we have the Light Dome Mini. So let's set these two up next to each other. So much nicer. Soft lights, so much more pleasant. This is the Westcott over here. Here are the new camera settings. Not getting as much punch as when it goes through a Fresnel, but again, it's nice and soft already. So the aperture 300X lot more output, but less flexibility in color. We do have the daylight and warm color temperature control, which is great. That's 90% of the time, that's just an adjustment I need to make. But if you ever need to change the hues around, the Westcott has that fun advantage of being able to mix in different colors without gels. In the final test, let's compare this 300X to the 120D Mark II. I'm actually surprised that the 120D Mark II actually isn't that far behind the 300X. But of course, between the two, the 300X is cooler because we have that flexibility and color temperature. Now, one thing that is interesting is that you can choose between constant output and max output mode. So max output is what we had it on. And that means if I have it to 100%, it's putting out as much power as it possibly can in that color temperature. Just for reference, at 6,500 degrees Kelvin, it's drawing about 207 watts. And then as I bring it closer to the middle, around 4,500 degrees, it's drawing about 336 watts. So it's definitely using more energy. And then again, as we go into a very warm color temperature, we're back down to about 200 watts. So it's going to fluctuate how much power it can output throughout. But if you have your camera's exposure set and you wanna change the color balance of the light, that's when you might wanna switch over to constant output. So now as I go through the color temperature, the amount of output should stay pretty much the same. It never really peaks past the 300 we were seeing when we had it on max output mode. So a lot more power that you have access to in max output which is probably where I'm gonna keep it, but if you ever need to shift your color during a take, that's when you might wanna switch it around. 
Also, we have stuff like dimming curve, which is interesting. Right now it's on linear, so as you bring up the light, it's gonna go straight up. But you can also switch it to exponential, log, S-curve, linear, depending on how you want it to react as you increase the intensity. Cool little feature there, it gives you that control. And remember this thing that I wasn't sure what it was for? Turns out it is a cable relief hook, so I screw that in right there. And that's just gonna help alleviate some of the pressure off of this cable, just kind of help with the longevity of everything because the cables tend to be a weak point but this is something that the 300d had and now we have it in the 300x it just clicks right in stable nice right now we're fully just running off battery right now so we can really just pick this up and go anywhere now this is a small complaint i had with the 300d and it's still a complaint here there's the release button not gonna touch it and it's definitely secure on there but i can just yank it out with enough force it's quite a bit of force but still it can come out without you pressing that button and at first i wasn't sure if it was because the battery or the mount but check this out here's a red battery boom core switch products dno they all can come off with enough force now as long as you're being careful that really shouldn't be a concern but in case you accidentally bump it or being a little bit clumsy, it can fall off and V-mount batteries kind of expensive. On the other hand, on the 120D Mark II, all these batteries, uh, no matter how much force, I put it down, can't get it off. Uh, oh, let me try another one. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice if they could make that really small tweak to make it so it's as solid as the one on like the 120D Mark II. But in terms of complaints, that's really about it for a light this awesome there's a whole lot good here you have a light that's really powerful portable flexible in color temperature you can battery power it pretty easily and of course it's a bones mount so it works with a lot of the accessories that we already have so this is cool this is really cool and like their other new lights we have all these effects like this one's pulsing there's fireworks there's a tv so that can be useful sometimes and you can also control it through our phones with the Sidus link app the app is especially helpful when you have these lights all over the place so you have one app and you can control everything get creative without having to go to each light turn a knob go to another light turn another knob so all the aperture lights work together in their own ecosystem it's pretty nice actually and yeah it all fits into this case that it comes with so that's nice overall i'm very impressed i think the only thing that could make this better is if it was full rgb but i'm really impressed with the light i'm impressed with the quality unless you're doing this all the time i think you're probably good i don't really have any other complaints so yeah that's all i got how's this for comment reading lighting campfire Ooh. gene blames girlfriend for paying 80 dollars for tupperware also gene buys the osmo action twice i did huh but let me tell you about this tupperware that she bought it's actually pretty amazing for Tupperware. See, it's like airtight and you press the button and it comes up. It's so simple, but it works so well. See how there's water in here? I'm gonna set this in, press the button and oh, whoa, see this is straight up infomercial status right here. But look, no, it's actually impressive, right? And then you press the button and then it comes out. Oh, it's great. I love it when things are super, super simple but they work so good. I'll throw a link to the $80 Tupperware down there in the description. It's just, it's so good. I never thought I'd be excited about Tupperware. All right, I'm getting tired of this effect. Let me change it up. Faulty bulb. Isn't that great? It's a $1,200 light that's faulty. <laughs> Does anyone notice that he wrote GoPro instead of GoPro? Oh crap, I hate typos, man. I was seriously always the first one to be eliminated from every spelling bee ever. That's a fact, look it up. Damn it guys, the mic adapter literally sold out in minutes. <laughs> okay, this is the Osmo Action's mic adapter. I, you know, I, I gotta turn this off. <laughs> mic adapter for the Osmo Action, it is awesome. Tell you what, if you have an Osmo Action, let me know in the comments and within the first 30 minutes of this video going live, I will give this away to somebody, I'll ship it directly to you. But if you go down there and say, I have an Osmo Action, you better have an Osmo Action because I'm gonna ask for proof, okay? Okay. You can't just be like, oh, I have an Osmo Action because I want to win, but then I ask for proof and you're like, oh, let me uh, let me get one or my friend's borrowing it for the next two and a half weeks. No, no, no. If you want a chance to win this, then you have to have it on you, ready to send me a picture 
proof that you have one and then I will send this out to you, okay? First 20 minutes of the video going live, that's it. Oh, this also showed up, hold on, let me light it. No, not on paparazzi mode. This thing, it's the PGY Tech case. I don't remember buying this one. I think VGY actually sent this to me after I posted the video, but in the video, I obviously already have one, so I don't need another one. So I also include this to whoever I send this out to. I mean, I'm trying to seem like I'm generous, but really, I just try and get rid of it. That's it, peace.